vapour control for single ply flat roofs. Okay. So just to start the presentation. Um, so this is an overview of the content which will be covered in today's uh, webinar. Uh, which vapour control for single ply flat roofs. Um, so just have going starting off looking at what is a vapour control layer, um, then vapour control specifically for flat roofs. Um, I'll then look, consider the various types of vapour control membranes currently available within the market, and then look at the differences between a vapour control layer or VCL against a vapour barrier. Um, this will be followed up with an overview to Alutrix 600 vapour barrier. And then we'll look at some typical warm cold deck roof build up designs, uh, vapour control installation, and also what can go wrong with the without a vapour control layer in place. And then the webinar will be uh, concluded with some case study examples. So what is a vapour control layer? Um, in simple terms, this is typically a plastic or foil layer on, on the inner face of a building which is used to reduce moisture flow into and through the walls, roof or floor. Now this is to prevent damaging levels of condensation occurring in the fabric of the building, which in turn would cause decay in timber, corrosion in metals or frost damage in masonry. Damage from water condensation due to water vapour can wreak havoc on even the sturdiest of built structures and threaten the effectiveness of insulation. Vapour control membranes are frequently used in flat roof constructions to prevent moist air from inside of the building condensing onto the roof assembly and potentially causing damage to materials. These products are an important way to preserve the thermal efficiency of roof insulation and so make up a crucial part of protecting the comfort and energy efficiency of a home or commercial building. To work effectively, the vapour membrane must also be warm enough to stay above the dew point on the exterior side, which means sufficient insulation must be installed over the membrane to maintain the temperature no matter the weather outside. Now, looking at vapour control for flat roofs. Now, a vapour control layer helps to shield the building from the consequences of condensation. Condensation is generated when warm, moist air rises and condenses into a liquid on contact with the cooler areas above the insulation. The notion behind a vapour control layer is to install it on the rim side of the insulation so it stops the passage of warm, moist air entering the structure. A VCL is a very important component in a warm build-up, acting as one of the protective layers that min minimises the amount of warm, moist air that comes into a construction aspect. Now, VCL in conjunction with the correct use of venting and membranes will essentially eradicate the risk of interstitial condensation. It is the two design fundamentals working collectively that greatly reduce the destructive effects of condensation on the structure. A VCL prevents damp and mould generally, helps to pre prevent major respiratory problems, according to the NHS. Now, as well as these major health ramifications, condensation can also cause structural problems, weakening wooden frame structures and corroding other materials. And in addition to this, a major benefit of the VCL is that it will prevent installed insulation becoming damp and losing its thermal properties. A vapour control layer or VCL on a warm roof sits between the roof decking and the insulation material. Now, what are the types of flat roof vapour control membranes uh, available? Well, when constructing a flat roof, there are two types of materials commonly used, bituminous vapour control membranes or non-bituminous vapour control membranes. Now, firstly, the bituminous VCL, um, this membrane is typically made of modified bitumen with a fibrous carrier sheet. More advanced versions are composed of an aluminium core and polyester base coated with a polymer modified bitumen. The top surface has a fine mineral finish. These types of VCLs are commonly used in built up felt roofing systems. The next is uh, the reinforced polythene VCL. This is a reinforced polythene laminate material which provides additional tear resistance. Membrane thickness is typically 350 microns. This type of VCL also requires mechanical fixing and again is sealed using butyl tape with a separate tape for the laps. 
And then thirdly, uh, we have the reinforced polythene VCL. Now, this is a reinforced polythene laminate material which provides tear resistance. Membrane thickness is typically 350 microns. This type of VCL also requires mechanical fixing and is sealed using butyl tape, again with a separate tape for the laps. And then lastly, we have um, the reinforced bitumen metal vapour barrier. Now, this is a self-adhesive reinforced aluminium membrane, which has a modified bitumen underside, which is protected by release film backing. This barrier membrane is puncture resistant and has a thickness of 600 microns. So looking at uh, a vapour comparison between a vapour control layer or VCL versus a true vapour barrier. So a polythene vapour control layer limits the movement of air and water vapour through a membrane. So uh, a vapour control layer is air permeable or vapour permeable. Comparatively, a vapour barrier prevents any movement of vapour or air occurring through the building instead of just limit, limiting it to a controlled level. Our vapour control layers differ from vapour barriers in that they are designed to slow the flow of moisture and not block it completely. Vapour control layers are also airtight and generally used as an airtight layer to make buildings airtight. Vapour barriers fully prevent the movement of vapour and air. Now the VCLs effectively act only as a vapour check whereas a vapour barrier fully seals the building from vapour penetration altogether, hence provides a more robust performance against the vapour movement, which can cause condensation. Now, it's, uh, as an introduction to Alitrix 600 vapour barrier, um, Alitrix 600 is a self-adhesive vapour barrier membrane designed for use in a wide range of construction applications. The membrane is suitable for use beneath mechanically fixed single ply roofing membranes, self adhesive membranes, felt, asphalt, liquid waterproofing systems, profiled metal sheeting, and also standing seam systems. Alitrix is also ideal for internal projects subject to very high humidity levels, such as breweries, swimming pools, sports halls, kitchens, and bathrooms. Now, Alitrix vapour barriers can be walked on and are puncture resistant with a high tensile strength, which makes them ideal for profiled metal sheets. Incredibly quick to and easy to install and also compatible with most materials. These highly effective vapour barriers consist of a reinforced alumin aluminium composite that is self-adhesive on the bitumen backing, which is protected by a det det detachable film. In addition to the vapour barrier function, which has an SD value of greater than 1,500, Alitrix membranes also form an airtight layer in line with energy saving regulations. Now the quick to install vapour barrier creates both an airtight and vapour tight seal that abides by energy conservation regulations and also, also offers high resistance to tearing and foot trafficking on profiled metal decking without puncturing. It can also act as a temporary waterproofing seal and can be bonded to metal and timber decks and cement particle boards, thus enabling the quick waterproofing of the building and allowing other internal works within the building to continue. Well, next, uh, we'll look at vapour control for existing roofs. Now, in a refurbishment scenario, it may be possible to retain the existing roof build up as the VCL, depending on the condition of this. When installing a single ply membrane, existing membranes such as the BUR, which is tar and gravel or felt, can be left in situ to be used as a vapour barrier so long as the roof deck is in good order and does not need to be replaced due to water damage. In this scenario, the insulation can be glued onto existing uh, roof covering using um, a PU adhesive. Now, next we'll look at various types of um, roof build-ups and where the vapour control layer uh, fits within this. Now, firstly is the warm, roof, warm deck roof. Um, the warm deck roof design um, is a modern method for flat roof construction and is preferred wherever this option is possible. Now this provides a more reliable roof as the insulating layer is located above the roof rafters and between the structural supports, uh, which leaves a warm, which results in a temperature for the roof and loft area that, that is consistent with the rest of the property. 
The VCL is easier to maintain in a warm construction as it's generally out of the way of plasterboard fixings and downlights. Often the VCL on a warm roof is bonded to a timber substrate which helps the integrity. However, in, in a warm roof, the VCL has two important functions. Uh, firstly, much like a cold roof, it stops the transfer of warm moist air from inside the building into the warm roof layers. And then secondly, while carrying out its first function, it is also keeping the air from inside the warm roof layers inside the warm roof. Why is this important? Well, once a warm roof is completed, it's ex effectively a sealed capsule. Now, when the sun shines, the air inside the capsule expands, which may cause the membrane to balloon. When the roof cools, the air contracts. If when the temperature rises, the air expands and escapes out of a defective VCL, there will be a negative pressure cause within the layers when the roof cools. This will mean that the air from the building is drawn back in through the defective VCL layer. This air will likely be warm and of a high moisture content. So once inside, it will become trapped, naturally migrating to the underside of the top waterproofing membrane layer, where it will cause mole growth, reduce the effectiveness of the insulation, and if there is any timber in the warm roof layers, will cause this to rot very quickly. And next is the cold roof deck roof. Um, in a cold deck roof construction, the insulation is laid between the ceiling joists and over the ceiling. This results in the roof and loft area being colder than the rest of the property. In a cold roof builder, the VCL normally ends up on the underside of the joists or rafters and is punctured many times when covered over by the internal finishes. Should the ceiling below also have down lighters, the VCL could be seriously damaged and therefore virtually useless. For this reason, it's very important that the cold roof has the correct ventilation to ensure that any potential condensation that forms can dry out without causing damage to the roof structure or covering materials. It should be noted that some metal roofs are seriously affected by the presence of moisture to the underside without free air movement. This in itself can lead to underside corrosion. In the past, the cold deck method of flat roof construction was favoured. However, with changes in how people live and how properties are utilised, this has now changed. So constructing a flat roof. Now, warm deck flat roofs can be constructed on most modern construction materials types, such as concrete, timber and timber based sheets. To use a single ply membrane for warm deck flat roof construction, solid roof insulation such as PR should be placed on top of the roof deck rather than in, be in between the rafters. A vapour barrier will then need to be installed to reduce condensation in the roof structure. The insulation and vapour barrier can be mechanically fixed using fasteners and washers or a self-adhesive vapour barrier such as Allotrix can be installed with insulation bottomed on the top using PU adhesive. This removes the need for mechanical fasteners that can cause cold bridging. Now, vapour control installation. An efficient vapour barrier will require bonded overlaps and penetration should be effectively sealed. It should be applied with precaution to ensure that it is isolated from building movement where necessary so that it maintains integrity and service. This will sometimes lead to the use of a partially bonded two layer barrier. Now a vapour check is constructed from a single layer and partial bonding is not necessary as a small amount of damage from building movement would make little difference to the effectiveness of the vapour check. Unsealed laps and penetrations are accepted and a small amount of physical damage can be tolerated. The materials forming the vapour barrier or vapour check and their method of attachment will be determined by the nature of the deck. So looking at the typical detail for constructing a mechanically fixed warm roof deck. Um, to, to build this using a membrane system, um, what would be required would be a roof deck which generally would be made up of on a timber basis of a minimum 80 mil ply or OSB free deck, a new, a new vapour barrier or leave the existing felt membrane in situ if this has not suffered water damage and then in the insulation layer PIR mineral insulation or similar. And then to build this uh, involves screwing a 9mm board and insulation down into the existing joints and then install the membrane as per installation instructions. Now this detail um, explains uh, how a self-adhesive vapour barrier 
um, would be constructed in in a warm roof build up. Um, so again, this would be made up of typically uh, based on the timber deck, minimum 18 mil ply or OSB freeboard. Uh, the Alutrix 600 self adhesive vapor barrier, which uh, goes on to a layer of FG35 primer. Uh, and then PU adhesive glue to stick down uh, the tissue face, either PR, mineral wall or similar as well. A note here um, would be that the self adhesive barrier offers significant advantages over screw fixing as it enables the roof to be made watertight prior to the waterproof membrane being installed. Now vapour control for profiled metal decks. Now profiled metal decks roofs can be challenging to effectively apply a vapour control layer to by the nature of the deck surface itself, specifically for buildings that pose a higher load of condensation risk such as swimming pools, sports halls and breweries. The vapour control recommendation is for, is for a continuous bituminous self-levelling vapour barrier to BSEN 13970-2004, which is flexible sheets for waterproofing bitumen weight water vapour control layers. Now, Alutrix 600 is ideally suited for such applications as it can be easily be adhered to the prime's metal deck surface and rolled out in the direction of the profile itself. The vapour barrier is also suitable to be walked on and is tear resistant. Now, what are the things that can go wrong in a flat roof without a, a VCL? Now, flat roofs are among the simplest construction elements that can feature in a building. A warm roof features a structural deck, vapour controller, insulation, waterproofing, which is a tried and tested solution that the industry knows works. Designed, specified and constructed correctly, a warm roof will keep the roof structure at the same temperature as the building's interior, eliminating the possibility of condensation occurring and ensuring the roof performs for the life of the building. Not only is a vapour barrier or vapour control layer a vital component of the roof, it must also be correctly positioned on the warm side of all the insulation. Now, the British standard for the control of condensation in buildings, which is BS5250, makes the best argument for why the incorrect placement of insulation should be avoided. Without a VCL within the warm roof buildup, condensation can kind of occur below the membrane, either on the plywood or the insulation, depending on the buildup used possibly producing visible blistering and wet patches inside. If left, the deck and insulation would gradually get wetter and wetter, even though the membrane itself was correctly installed. Left untreated, this could then eventually progress to issues of interstitial condensation. Now, interstitial condensation occurs within the fabric of a building at the, at the dew point where the atmospheric temperature of a given concentration of water vapour drops to a point when water droplets begin to condense and dew can form. Interstitial condensation is different from surface condensation, such as that caused by cold bridging, and its occurrence within the roof or wall structure of a building is difficult to detect without investigation. Now, the next, um, now we'll, next few slides will be a uh, uh, run through of some uh, case study examples of um, a vapour barrier in place. Um, so first is uh, Forest School, which is an independent school uh, located in Walthamstow in East London. Um, the project involved the expansion of existing prep school uh, building by adding a, an additional floor onto the accommodation. So uh, the architect Studio 54 um, architecture specified um, uh, uh, a hybrid EPDM system, but it utilised as a vapour barrier um, uh, 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 as the VCL um, beneath the insulation um, to ensure that the building was watertight prior to prior to the installation, uh, the membrane, and then uh, the rubber tile system uh, above this. And then we have Heathland's Dementia Care Unit. Um, this is a project, um, care home project, partnership between Bracknell Forest Council and East Berkshire Clinical Commissioning Group. Uh, set, set on the former Heathland's Care Home in Bracknell, um, it was demolished to create a new facility to provide 66 beds, offering a mix of um, long-term 
el term care for elderly, mentally infirm and short term nursing and rehabilitation care. Now, the specified flat roofing system builder included Alitrix 600 uh, foil vapour barrier, which was a critical component with a warm roof build up. Uh, this type of VCL was uh, self adhered, therefore it, it made the achieving the water tightness of the building a quick and easy process. The robustness of the membrane also meant that follow on trades could traffic over the roof while the roofing installation was going on without damaging the, the membrane. Um, Bullerswood Sports School. Um, again, another school project. Um, a, um, a hybrid EPDM system was specified for um, two areas of this school, um, the dining hall and the sports hall roof, um, mainly be due to the fact that they are they were featured profiled metal metal deck roofs. Um, Adatrix 600 was utilised um, and specified and utilised uh, within the warm roof build up of both these areas, um, mainly due to it being ideally suited to the challenges of profiled metal roofing, um, which is a common construction de detail in this type of building. And then the National Swimming Centre um, in uh, the Netherlands. Uh, so this was um, this was a this was a, a new swimming centre which featured a 50 metre pool uh, that was built in uh, Tongelreep in the Netherlands following on successes of uh, natives um, following from the 2000 Sydney Olympics. So Alitrix 600 uh, with vapour barrier was applied um, in this instance both to the building facade and the roof. Um, which also acted as a temporary waterproofing layer prior to the installation of the metal cladding finish. And then Chestnut Grove 6 form, this was um, another school building. So RH Partnership Architects specified um, hi uh, Resitrix hybrid EPDM system um, and again utilising uh, the Alitrix vapour barrier. Um, to ensure the building was watertight um, prior to the installation and all the warm roof system going down. And again, uh, Dover Boys Grammar School, um, a similar sort of build up there as well. Again, Alitrix 600, um, which is I I ideal for the profiled metal decking. Right, so now that we've um, we've come to the end of um, the webinar, um, apologies for for the additional delay um, and confusion in accessing this at the beginning. Um, if anyone has any um, any questions, we'd be happy to take them. Thank you, Anne. That was really good. Or you can type in the questions if you prefer, uh, either way. And are you able to see the chat feature? Yeah. OK. There's a question from. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah.
Okay, thank you for attending. Much appreciated. Okay, thank you all. If there are no further questions, but feel free to email us if you wish to, or email Anne if you've got any questions or any further reference that you need. OK, thank you. Cheers, bye. Bye. Thank you. Anne.
still being recorded. Dismiss.